We are now speaking to Sunisha Pakrasamy, who is an economist with Momentum Investments. Welcome, Sunisha. Thank you, Mishrika. Sunisha, let's get into this. What do you think was the tax impact on the consumer from yesterday's budget 2017? I think the overall impact on the consumer was a net negative, but saying that it was also redistributive in nature, which means that the low income earners were not hit as hard as the higher income earners. We think that the higher income earners did bear the brunt of the tax increases. Two angles that this came through. The first was that the uppermost tax bracket of 41% has now been shifted to 45%. So, so you basically get around four and a half billion in additional revenues coming through from that stream. There's about a hundred or so thousand um, individuals that belong to that particular tax bracket. And the second thing that hit your higher income earners was the dividend withholding tax, which was increased from 15 to 20%. Whereas on your lower income earner side, there were some measures that were put in place in order to dampen or uh, decrease the amount of impact that was felt at that end of the market. We had a continuation of the social grants coming through. So these are still growing at around 2.3% in real terms per annum over the next three fiscal years. They also raised the threshold for the transfer duties. So if you are in that particular income earning bracket, buying an affordable house, there are more people now that will not have to pay those transfer duties in. And even though government didn't really allow for compensation for bracket creep, there was a little bit of compensation at the lower end of the market. So overall, uh, a ne negative impact on the consumer. But again, we think that the upper income earner was probably hit a bit harder than your lower income earner. In terms of the tax burden, the trajectory and relative relativity to other countries, how relative are we in terms of tax to other countries? Our current tax burden, which is your tax to GDP ratio, is somewhere in line with what we'd find in the US or Australian economies. Um, so again, not too high on an international comparison, but I think we do need to think about what we actually get out of the taxes we do pay into the economy and how these are spent. Um, obviously, the more efficiently these taxes are spent, the higher the tax burden can go. We get more services for that money. Uh, over the course of the next few fiscal years, we are expecting the tax burden relative to GDP to continue picking up as uh, revenue is expected to continue to climb over the foreseeable horizon. What changes can we expect to the debt trajectory and contingent liabilities? I think that this was one of the key important things that we did see coming through in the budget, that the fiscal consolidation path looks very similar to what we had in the October medium term budget. We actually saw that uh, government continues to aim to get the fiscal debt ratio to around 2.5% at the end of the medium term horizon. And in doing so, we actually saw that the net debt and gross debt to GDP ratios continue to stabilize within the foreseeable horizon. The gross debt to GDP ratio uh, actually tends to peak out a bit sooner. Your net debt to GDP ratio now peaking in uh, fiscal year 2020-2021. If you add on top of that the number of contingent liabilities and provisions, there are no major adjustments that were made relative to a year ago. So again, quite good on that front in terms of trying to stabilize our debt ratio over the foreseeable horizon. And then finally, what is your view on what rating agencies are likely to think of this budget 2017? I think that the rating agencies should be quite comforted by the fact that we continue along this prudent fiscal path. We've managed to maintain our fiscal ratios relative to GDP that look very similar to where we had these numbers in the October budget. Similarly, the debt trajectory also looks quite good relative to where we were in October. But again, the rating agencies don't only look at the budget in order to do their review on South Africa. There are a number of other factors that come into play. So come to the end of the year, South Africa is still sitting in a low growth environment. Not much was really said in terms of structural reform or tangible evidence around structural reforms in order to put South Africa on a higher and more sustainable growth path. I think that this will be a slight negative when the rating agencies do their review on South Africa later on in the year. 
And of course, the issues around political noise and potential political interference that could undermine structural reform in the economy. Now, we know that we are already sitting with very little fiscal room to maneuver. So if the global economy does wobble, and this does extend to the local economy, it does imply that we have very little room in terms of our fiscal and debt metrics. So we could experience a more adverse shock should that occur. So again, come through to the end of the year, around December, when the rating agencies are set to meet for the second time this year, we do believe that there is still a chance that South Africa could face the prospect of a downgrade, given the ongoing political noise, the fact that South Africa is stuck in a low growth environment and has very little room to maneuver fiscally. Well, we really hope that doesn't happen. But thank you so much, Sanisha, for you know giving us your views and your expertise on tax and budget 2017. Thanks a lot.